Hey, let's talk about eco-ableism. Ableism is bigotry or prejudice against disabled people. Eco-ableism is the notion that disabled people need to be sacrificed in order to achieve true sustainability. If you've ever seen pictures of, like, pre-cut fruit in a plastic container and all the comments are about how lazy and wasteful people are, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's lazy and wasteful. It usually just means that people can't do that by themselves. And the problem is not disabled people needing accommodation. The problem is that the system will not provide accommodation that does not also kill the planet. Disabled people have been harmoniously integrated into human society since literally the dawn of civilization. So disabled people needing accommodations and needing single-use materials is not the problem. So try not to condemn people for using things that are not sustainable or environmentally friendly. Because you don't know their life, and they might not really have much of a choice. This is called a boot chain. If you want one of these, I'll explain how to make one. The kind of boot chain that I made is comprised of two chains, a lobster clasp, two D-rings, two rivets, a piece of leather, and five spikes. For the rivets, you'll need a special kind of punch, a concave anvil, and a hammer. For the spikes, you'll need a Phillips screwdriver and some beading glue or super glue for choice. For the leather strips, you will need a pair of leather scissors to cut them. For the chain, I just use needle nose pliers. When you're finished making it, it'll sit on the boot as shown in the beginning of the video. To fasten when you're finished, run the long chain through the opposite D-ring and tighten. Then you'll clip on the original side. And then you're ready to wear your boot chain. Basically, I'm not great at sewing, but I saw this sash and realized that it would just be the peak gender euphoria. Look at that, look at that. So I'm gonna make it with practically zero skill and very little time. So they posted the image of it, I'm gonna include the belts and the wording and the flag and the coat tabs along the bottom, hopefully. These are the fabrics I used. Um, I already owned most of them, but I had to get new red fabric for this project. I started by making a shoulder pad to make the one side stick up a bit more, this is what it looked like. Then I cut a long red sash and the black letters out and pinned them all together to see how it would look spaced out. Then I sewed the letters on top and come back for part two. Hello and welcome to day two of trying to make this beautiful sash so I can get peak gender euphoria. Um, I've already posted day one so go check it out maybe. Now let's get onto it. So I laid the sash I'd already cut onto red fabric because I needed to make it longer and I cut that out there and then I staggered the end so it would be two different lengths and get a really cool layered effect. I then put a hem along the top just so I could fix where that would be and folded the ends into triangles so I could have points at the end of the sash which I thought would look really cool. Then I wanted to put the flag, which I was going to do as a non-binary flag because I think that's cooler than the British flag. And I just used white denim and acrylic paint to make that. Oh, let's make the belts. So I used this equipment to set the grommets. You just smash one part of it into the leather a couple times, put the little metal bits in, and then smash it with the other thing. Um, I'm not great at this, but come back to day three. Ah, day three, um, welcome, this is making a sash, uh, please go check out the other videos if you haven't already. So I'm using watered down acrylic paint to stay in the bottom of the fabric because I don't have any dye to get a gradient, then I spent the rest of the day adding grommets to the belts. It literally took so long, and then I added the white stitches using embroidery thread, and sewed on the flag and a ruffle I had made. Now for the tabs that I've been collecting for ages, um, I sew gold onto one layer of the sash and then silver onto the other layer. And I used sequins to make like a fluffy bit at the top and added some spikes and rivets from my collection of brands and metal trash. Finally I added this chain I had made out of tabs. Come back for part four. Hello and welcome to me proving that anyone can sew by making this beautiful sash with zero skill. First I got on the rest of the outfit so I could look all cool and fancy like him. Then I did a little bit of makeup as well and fluffed up my hair a bit. This is the first time I've seen it all together, I tried it on and as you can tell I am obsessed with it. I love the belts, I love the chain, it just looks better than I thought it would. Look, I can do the pose and the face, and this is just the best day ever. So thank you for everyone for watching and joining me on this journey. See you soon.
you to know this sea is a bliss Then this tram was built to cobble it up And I fell for this too So please can we talk about why we should raise the alarm Let's start with the movie where she didn't curse A disabled person for her main role With lots of excuses and harmful remarks Towards those with autism I am left shocked Don't watch this movie Don't watch this movie. Welcome, gaities and ladies, to my tutorial on how to turn a plastic bag into usable craft material. Part one, let's make some yarn out of this bitch. First, you want to flatten it out. Then you want to fold it. Yeah, like this. Cut off the end. And the handles. Save these for later. We're going to cut this into several pieces. It depends on how big you want your yarn to be. I'm going to cut it into four because that's what I'm currently working with. You'll end up with these loops. Take your loops. And knot them together. Like that. This stuff is extremely light. It does not tangle. And more importantly, it's cheap as fucking dirt. Go make something. Hey, remember when we cut the handles off that plastic bag? We're gonna make them into rope. So, you'll start by opening them up so they're a flat piece like this. Pull off these little ends. And save these for later because yes, we are also going to use these too. So you take this piece and you twist it. Keep going until it starts to kink in the middle. Like that. You keep twisting one end and you fold it over. You twist the end that was folded over, fold it over again. When you get to an end and you need to splice in more material, take another handle, fold it like a third of the way so that you don't run out and have a weak link. Layer it over these two ends, and you twist it in like this. And you just keep twisting and splicing more handles on. When you get a short end, like this, where you've got one short and one long, this is where you're going to splice in another piece. I don't have one prepared, but that's when you do it. It's not indestructible cord, but it is pretty strong and it's extremely light. Also, this is the bottom of the plastic bag. You can use this to make cordage too. It's just gonna be a lot smaller. It'll be closer to like string. Join us next time when we'll be using this shit to make fake leather. Hello, eco friends, it is part four, how to reuse a plastic bag. This time we're gonna be making stuff that's kind of like fake leather, sort of. So if you've no, been making cord out your handles, you probably got a lot of like this shit. Here's what you're gonna do with that. You can also do this with the entire middle section of a plastic bag if you don't want to use it to make yarn, it still works. So, we're gonna take all this shit, try and make it as flat as you can make it. Kind of layer it over itself. It doesn't have to be perfect, and you'll probably have a lot more than what I grabbed just now. You put it on top of an ironing board on top of this parchment paper. Then you'll take a second piece, put it on the top. It's gonna shrink a little bit while you're ironing it. But after you have one layer, you'll take off parchment paper, you'll put on another layer of stuff, and you can keep doing that until it's as thick as you want. This is what it ends up looking like. As you can see, it's got kind of leathery texture. It doesn't feel quite like real leather, so you probably couldn't make like clothes out of it or anything. But it's pretty tough, and you can sew it. So I might look into bag patterns, maybe backpack patterns. And there you go. You have officially used the entire plastic bag. Hey y'all, it's your weird aunt Kayla, and I'm back to give you guys some DIY tips to get your gear all decked out and looking good. So the first thing I'll go over is patch pants. I see a lot of you guys are getting into it. It might be your first pair, it might be your second pair. One thing that I'm seeing on a lot of these is a lot of people are doing really wide stitches. You actually want to get those really nice and tight. You want to get them so they are like really on there. If you don't, they will fall off and they will fray. Look, that sucker ain't going nowhere. Another thing that I've mentioned in another video is you don't have to do every single patch as a slogan or a band. You can use just blank ones to cover holes and things and you can do like patterns and whatever. Just do what you want, have fun with it. These bad boys right here, these are called cone studs. I like them so much better than the pyramid studs. They just look so nice. 
The back is just two prongs, so you just shove them right through and fold them down with a plier, a coin, a lighter, whatever you can find. I'm running out of time on this one, so let me know if you guys like this. Let me know if you want more. If you have questions, stay punk, stay awesome. You have subscribed to Punk Crafts! In today's edition of Punk Crafts, I'm gonna be teaching you one very important lesson. Literally anything can be a patch. Don't believe me? This cool logo on this t-shirt from this bar I once worked at. Sort of, back in college. It was a weird time. Any logo off any t-shirt? Take a pair of scissors, cut it out, sew it on something, patch. This stupid saying on the side of a makeup bag I'm never gonna use? Patch. Cut it out and sew it on something. This leather branding thing from a pair of jeans that I'm never gonna wear again? Patch. Here's one I made earlier with the skinny puppy t-shirt that I cut up and fucked up. Patch. This embroidery sampler telling me to chill my tits that my friend Allie made me? Patch. Vocês pediram tutorial e eu tô aqui. Bom, a primeira coisa que vocês vão fazer é pegar uma fita ou um cadarço, que foi o meu caso, que seja o suficiente para dar duas voltas no seu pulso, pelo menos. Aí você vai começar a colocar os lacres. O primeiro entra de costas, o segundo entra de frente, e logo depois você vai passar essas duas pontas pelo primeiro lacre de novo, para eles ficarem virados para trás. O terceiro lacre, ele entra de costas de novo, e as pontas passam para frente. E vocês vão fazer isso basicamente a pulseira inteira. Colocam de costas, passa as pontas para trás. Colocam de frente, passa as pontas para frente. E vai ficar mais ou menos assim. Quando der o comprimento que vocês querem, vocês dão um nozinho no final. E tá pronto. Duetem com o resultado de vocês, please. Today we're gonna make pins. Uh, you're gonna use bottle caps. This one was really old and was never used and had cork on it. I thought it was cool. Uh, and then you're gonna take pop tabs and safety pins. So you're gonna make sure if there's a design on it that you want to keep keep it right side up and then you're gonna take a pop tab and put it through a safety pin and put it like in the the cap and start bending the metal around the ones i was using were like really old and so it was really hard to like the metal was very difficult to bend but this was a newer cap and you can tell that i'm having a, a an easier time of bending it uh, and then I put a sticker on this because I didn't actually feel like painting it. I'll paint it one day, but as of now, it's a smiley face. <laughs> a depressed person could make this? No. I'm the furthest thing. garbage bag and lay it out flat. On the edges, we're going to mark out a little triangle right So we're going to do the same on the other side. So we've got two. 
Next, we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut along that line. But the important part, you don't wanna cut through the band here. That's important. When you're done, you should have something like this. The strap should still be in there. And now we're gonna repeat the same on the second side. When you're done, you should have something that looks a little bit like a chef's apron. And now same again, we're gonna cut the bottom off the bag. So how much or how little you cut off is really dependent on how long you want it to be. We're making a dress, so this is gonna stay longer. Shake it out, belt it up, 